joining me now here on the MMA Report is a man that I've not talked to in about two plus years. Last time we talked, he was getting ready for what ultimately was his final amateur fight. Isaac Moreno, Isaac, man, uh, appreciate the time. Of course, uh, since we last talked, you've been on a roll here as a professional mixed martial artist, just coming off your fourth professional victory, man. So, like, as you think about where you were, you know, as a martial artist back in, in 2020 when we talked there for your, your final amateur fight to where you're at now, like, how, how do you describe these two years? I mean, it's just been a lot of work. So, um, I mean, the work's never going to stop. So it's just a constant grind day in and day out and, and, uh, finding, finding that love every day, like just remembering why I'm doing it and, and, uh, how much I love what I'm doing. They always talk about that, that love for what you do, you know, no matter, I mean, whatever we all do, you know, we all have something that, that we, we do. Um, is it, is it that practice part of it for you of just like that, that mental grind of getting up every day and knowing like, damn, man, there is some, my my boys in the gym are trying to take my head off today. I mean, I get, I get hurt more in practice than I do in the fights. Like, but that's how I think it should be. Uh, I love the grind. I love those days where I know I'm going to come into, to it. We call them death sessions here. Like where it's a bunch of black belts and they're just beating me up for five rounds, five, five minute rounds. And I get 45 second rest and they're, it's a death session. So I have to survive. I have to, but I look forward to that. Like I, I have to mentally prepare, like, all right, I'm going to go in, I'm going to do this. And I mean, I'm I'm going to, I'm going to try to survive. So it's, it's just uh, like, I guess the anticipation of the day, like, oh man, uh, I'm going to get it today. <laughs> what, when I was uh, going back and, and I was looking at your Instagram, I think one of the things that, that really stuck out to me over these last two years is we've kind of seen that physical transformation of your body growing as a martial artist. So has that been kind of the, the biggest part of, you know, one of the, the key things that you and your team are working on is that, is that strength and conditioning aspect? Yes, sir. We, uh, I work with, with, uh, Mac strength and performance. He, uh, Right now, he just moved to, uh, I think it's Ohio, uh, to the West Side Barbell Gym, and his his coaching out there. And the West Side Barbell Gym is they they train the strongest athletes in the world, strongest powerlifters, strongest NFL players, like most explosive guys. And um, I work with him, and he's taking my strength and conditioning to another level. And then I'm also growing; like I'm still I'm still young, and I was just. I was, well, it was two years ago. I was 22, 21. And, uh, so my body's just growing, it's changing. And, uh, I mean, I, I like where I'm at. I like the weight that I'm at. I feel, I feel like I can still get bigger. And, uh, I, I feel like I can grow in my weight class and it's not a crazy cut. It's everything's, everything's good. I feel strong. I feel athletic here. I mean, I just did 15, I did 15 minutes of grinding this past weekend and then the next day I woke up and I still trained. So like, it's just, it's just part of the game. So, so, so are we saying we're just a uh, team, no days off. Uh, I mean, I, I take, I take two full days, but I was just like, I'm, I'm good. I'm not hurt. Thank you. And thank God I wasn't hurt. I came out fine and I, I just decided to work out and I do that. I do my same, my same routine every day. You know, you're talking about, you know, the weight aspect, and I feel like this is probably more of a conversation that happens with heavyweight fighters because obviously there's just, you know, there's such a huge uh, amount of weight they can be in that division. And, you know, I've had fighters talk about like they feel like, hey, there's there's a sweet spot. Like, I feel like if I'm walking around this type of weight, like this is where I maximize performance. Is that something you kind of notice, you know, from your amateur career and now into your pro career? Like, you kind of felt like I, I feel like I now know where that sweet spot is to get the to to maximize your performance? Uh, definitely. I mean, I started working with uh, a nutritionist. I started working with um, meal prep company. I started working with my strength and conditioning coach and we all figured out where, where my weight has to be and, and um, what I need to be eating and how often I need to be eating and how often I need to be training. And, um, 
we found, we figured it out. Everything's just dialed in. And the more disciplined I am, the easier, the easier the camp is because it's not so much, the camp's not so much about like, if I know how to fight, like I'm learning how to fight. We we've already established that it's about making the weight and getting ready for fight night and uh, making sure, making sure I peak right at the right time. And that, and that's, that all comes down to discipline with, with the diet, with the strength and conditioning and with everything else. So yeah, we, we definitely found that sweet spot. And of course you got that win there last week in at Fury 68. Uh, what was the mentality in that fight? Someone's O's got to go. What was that? Was that all part of the mentality? I mean, we, we had a game plan and, um, we we just executed. I knew I was going to go in there and and um, impose my will, and I did. So, yeah, I was I was going in there, leaving it all in there. Like I'm going to go in, I'm going to die on my shield. So, they always talk about in in athletics. There's ex- expectations of how you expect it to play out, and then there's the reality of how it played out were your expectations did they meet reality or, 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 or did Sam throw a little bit of curveballs at you? So we, we knew that Sam just takes people down mm-hmm. and hugs them. So, uh, yes, he has finishes choking people out, but the guys that he was going against were, they didn't know what they were doing on the ground. All right. It just come in basic jujitsu. And we just drilled basics. That's the whole camp. We just drilled basics. We drilled basics. And down here in South Texas, we have some killers uh, as black belts. And they were all in each week. Every week they were here training with me and uh, just busting my ass every day. Like Every day they came in here, I knew it was going to be a, a grinder. And I knew that. Whatever Sam threw at me, I wasn't be able to go through because I have 180, uh, 190 pounders. One uh, like they're all black belts. They're big. They're strong. They're athletic, and they've been doing jiu-jitsu for years. And I, if I can survive them, I can survive anyone else. So we were ready for for whatever. And um, that first round, he he did what he wanted to do, but. I never let him settle. I kept on escaping. I kept on regarding. And, um, I mean, the rest is history. After that, I, I, I feel like after the first round, I broke his will. And he was just like, man. And then he kept on shooting, kept on uh, going for the desperation shots. And he was just running into stuff at that point. So I, I remember because you're anyone who goes to your Instagram, the one thing they'll notice is you're a story guy. You know, you 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 know you don't put you don't put a ton in your feed, but most of it in your stories. Yeah. And I did notice the other day uh, you had something in your story where you noted the the interaction you had with Sam uh, about <laughs> what it was, it was like what eight weeks before this fight. Yeah, eight weeks before this fight, um, they had offered me Sam on a like four day notice, and uh, because my opponent dropped out for the second time, that the same opponent dropped out for the second time, and and we we're just kind of bummed. And then they offered me Sam, and it's just a smart decision. Like, we, this is a totally different. Um, I, I would have to totally change my game for that fight. Yeah. And um, we just decided to to uh, push it back. We're like, we're fine. We'll, we'll be fine. And then he goes on to comment on on my pictures and start just uh, just barking. Uh, on my on my stuff, so uh, I hit him. I, I told him, "Let's run it. Uh, let's run it in uh, in August. If you really want it, uh, let's let's run it in August. I'll give you it's eight weeks to prepare." He wanted to do it in four days. All right, I give you eight weeks. Get ready. And I mean, he, his whole team, uh, like all his people, were saying, "There's levels to this," and. Well, I guess I showed them there's levels. There is levels to this. Is um, that is that the first time you've uh, kind of dealt with that on social media with a an opponent? Uh, on social media, yeah, yeah. Um, I've I've had it to where at weigh-ins, uh, guys are are talking of a big storm, and I mean it's part of the game. 
So it's it's a coping mechanism, I guess, because they know it, they're going to get it. So <laughs> you know you, but you talked about you know all the, the black belts that you worked with. It just kind of made me think about like if you had a chance to take a a jujitsu seminar from you know, past fighter, current fighter, maybe it's just a judicial practitioner. Would there be someone kind of on that bucket list of like, man, I'd love being in a room with him for like two hours and just kind of pick his brain in terms of, of how they, they look at jujitsu. I mean, John Danaher or, uh, or Gordon Ryan, those guys are at the top of the, yeah. of the jujitsu world. And, I'd love to be in the room with them and just pick their brain. I mean, Danaher cornered uh, GSP. Yeah. Like that's he already he's already been there. He's been at the highest level in in the UFC, and he, they're still at the highest level in Jiu Jitsu. Like yeah. that's that's just someone that I'd want to learn and learn from. Uh, but uh, like my my uncle, my uncle, his he's really my my professor. And uh, he's a black belt under Gracie Baja. And he oversees everything I do. We, he schedules, like, what I'm going to do. And <laughs> and we we just, I'm with him 24-7. Like, I, we're either here in the studio or we're in his office. We're always talking up um, fighting or or uh, different different uh, techniques. And it, it's just crazy. We're, like, I'm surrounded by jiu-jitsu. So people think that I my jiu-jitsu game like I have no jujitsu because all I, I mean, all people have seen is my striking, but we, they're going to have, well, by the time I get to the UFC, it's going to be over. Don't you, over. don't you look at that as a positive though? In, in the way yeah. of, okay, people just, they may think it's a weakness. But they just don't know. Yeah. Like I, I remember, exactly. I, I remember a couple weeks ago I was talking to a fighter and they were talking about. They're like, like everything you see from me is on the ground. He goes, no one knows what I can do on my feet. And he goes, I like that. He goes, I like that there's this unknown because he goes, at some point, I know I'm going to have to use it. I know at some point it's going to happen. But they, they said they look at it more from a positive as opposed to maybe a, a quote unquote negative aspect. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't look at it as a, as a negative because that's just something I have in my pocket. Yeah. So take me down. All right. All right. Let's see if you can hold me down because I'm strong, I'm athletic, and then I know what I'm doing. Yeah. So it's uh, it's something that that we con we constantly work on, and um, not a lot of people get to see that. So would there whenever whenever I use it, so would there be a bucket list submission to pull off inside MMA competition? <laughs> uh, I mean. I have, I've, I've submitted my first, my first fight was, I ended it in submission. Uh Um, and that was by rear neck choke. But I mean, I don't think there's any submission that I really want to do. It's whatever comes, comes. I don't, I don't like forcing things and, and it's the opportunity will present itself with when it's, when it's right. But I am planning to, to make my name on the no gi scene as well. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to be starting, uh, to compete more in the, in the Nogi scene because I want to make my name everywhere. Not only in MMA, I want to make it in jujitsu. I eventually want to get some boxing fights Mm -hmm. and make my name in boxing and just take over. Like I said, take over everything, every, every, every aspect I can. You mentioned about that mentality of, you know, taking what's there. You know, if, if they give me a, a rear naked choke, let me go to rear naked choke. They give me the guillotine, go for the guillotine. Or, you know, that, that left jab is there. I'm just going to keep pumping you with that left jab. Exactly. Is that always a mentality you had as a fighter? No, no, no. Uh, this is something that comes with uh, maturity. Mm-hmm. Um, because at first, I all I wanted to do was finish, 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 finish. And you can't do that. You have the. You have to let the opportunity present itself, and it will. You, you just stick to your basics. You put you put your punches together. You put your techniques together, and it's gonna come. It's gonna come. You don't have to force it. Um, the opportunity is gonna be there, and when it is, when when the opportunity presents itself, you have to be ready to take it. So, 
that's that's something like you just have to be waiting, 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 waiting. It's gonna come, it's gonna come, it's gonna come, and when it comes, just take it. Did that did that shift happen inside the fight or did it happen inside the fight room? Uh fight room. Fight okay. room, yeah. Lots of lots of uh like I said, uh, I'm always with my uncle and it's just a lot of talks and uh we 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 just we discuss a whole bunch of stuff and, and go over like just different mentalities and um what I could do when I can when I can do uh let's say let's say I I'm, I really want to land a, a hook mm-hmm. so we're going to we're going to break down all right, where I can land it from after what punch can I land it uh if let's say I slip to one side can I throw it from there and still be safe and not get hit from the other side. Like, it's just, just constant. Um, just, we're just always talking about stuff. So always breaking things down. And, and, uh, that was just something that, that came when, with maturity, like, all right, Hey, we gotta just slow things down. It's gonna, it's gonna come. Everything's gonna come. And I feel that's why I'm, I'm able to last. I'm in the fight. I'm not, I'm not thinking like, Oh, I gotta hit him! I gotta hit him! I'm yeah. like, no, I'm just, I'm gonna pick him apart and make him run into my stuff. So, is your uncle, it, is your uncle ultimately the reason you got into the fight game? Uh, no, no, no. I, I've always, I've always been. I started martial arts at the age of three. My father was the one that put me in. Okay, and uh, I mean, I do it, I do it. I say I don't do it for my dad, but I do do it for my dad. Like my dad's been my, my number one supporter. Uh, well, my, both my parents have been my number one su- supporters and, uh, I really do this for them. They, they saw me grow into what I am now. Yeah. I, th- from three years old, uh, doing karate, I got my black belt. I went into uh, kickboxing. I won world championships and, uh, and then now I'm doing MMA and I really, I love what I do. So I feel like that, that's just like a, a sense of accomplishment. Uh, like that's, a, that's a, um, like that, that's, I'm accomplishing their, like, how can I put it? I mean, I feel, I just feel like I make them happy. Like, yeah. Dang. I, Isaac's, Isaac's doing what he loves and, and, uh, I think they're happy that they were able to provide me and put me in, into the position I am now. And then uh, once I started MMA, I mean, my uncle, like I said, he's a black belt. So he was the first guy that I went to. Like, hey, I need to learn jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then, um, well, then we just started talking and, and we started training. And, um, and then the rest is history. And, like, I moved in with my uncle and we've just, like I said, I'm, we're constantly talking about this uh-huh. stuff. And he, like, he watches over everything I do, and and he's he's my best friend. And we're just we're always together now. And like I said, we're either in the studio or in his office, but we're always together. So it's we're, it's constant martial arts, like twenty four seven. You mentioned about living with your uncle. Just we'll kind of end on this. Made me kind of think about like you know if you get one up on your uncle that day in the, in the, in the training room. You know, let's just say you land a you call a submission. Do you take that home when it, like maybe he tries to throw a little jab? You go, hey, you know what? You remember I caught you today. I'll catch you again tomorrow. <laughs> nah, he he, uh, he puts it on me. <laughs> I, he he uh, nah, he he doesn't let me. He doesn't let up. So. Uh-huh. I mean, I'm still searching for that, for that one day. Um, I always sound like I'm going to get you, man. One day, maybe when you're 50, but I'm going to get you. So that, I mean, that's, that's how, that's what we do. So it's, it's, I live a, I live a very simple life and, and I love what I do and I'm surrounded by good people and, uh, I can't, I can't ask for anything more. And we look forward to seeing that next time you step back inside competition here, man. As always, uh, appreciate time. Great to catch back up with you. Of course, uh, let me know anything. Follow you on social media. And, of course, anything else you want to mention, man. The floor is yours. Um, just follow me on Instagram, primetime underscore Moreno. And um, shout out to all my sponsors, 
Shout out to all my teammates. Y'all know who you are. My parents, my coaches. I love you guys.